Um, you know, for us, I'll start off just kind of um, thanking our scouting group and our front office group. It's been a tremendous uh, effort uh, in this off season so far, and the draft is really the first kind of big step of that for us. And so Milt Newton and Dave Dean, Ryan Hoover, uh, Ronald Dupree, uh, Dave Babcock, who's been with us forever, uh, Pete Herman, those guys have done an unbelievable job. And, and, you know, we had one pick coming into the draft, the last pick in the draft, and we've worked really hard to try to generate some options for the team and, and to add some youth and athleticism. Um, I think, you know, with uh, the transaction that we did with Orlando, um, using our, our future second, 2030 second, and using cash, we were able to acquire the 36th pick in the draft. We had a really specific, um, excuse me, <clears throat> Uh, really specific targets in mind um, and kind of an idea of what we wanted to go for. And uh, we were able to get the pick and kind of get the player uh, that we wanted at that pick. Uh, Andre Jackson Jr. Is, is a national champion, an experienced player in a big time program, um, a winner, a guy that was really on the award ballots and kind of on the watch list for being a uh, defensive player of the year in college basketball. Kind of a Swiss Army knife guy. I mean, just top level athlete, great in the open floor, um, really knows how to play, great pace, great decision making, um, high character, and just a winner. And so we're really excited to have him on our team and, and to, to be able to draft him. And then with the last pick in the draft, uh, 58, to be able to get uh, someone with a resume and the pedigree of Chris Livingston, uh, McDonald's All American, a 19 year old who played at Kentucky. Just has an unbelievable body, physical makeup, uh, great competitor, uh, high-level individual, um, intelligent-wise and competitiveness. Um, we thought that was a great opportunity for us. And so a uh, successful night for us, really excited about it. And, and last, just before I open for questions, I think with the news on Chris Middleton, um, uh, he had the ability to decline his option um, and the opportunity to eventually become a free agent if he chooses so. Uh, he's earned that opportunity. and. Uh, Chris is core to who we are and uh, really all the success that we've had. And our goal is always to sustain, sustain our success and continue to compete and be in a chance to win, a uh, position to win year in and year out. And we hope to have him back, you know, and, and when the time's right and appropriate, we'll continue to work through that and, and just kind of go through it. So um, with that, I'll uh, say you guys thanks again for being here. I know it's late and I'll take questions. Hey, John. Um, I know when you only have one pick going into a draft and it's later, it can sometimes be difficult to get to certain guys or get them in for workouts. Just kind of what interactions did you have with Andre before the draft and what did that kind of look like? Yeah, um, I think it's the whole group, but a huge shout out to, to Peter Herman, uh, Ron Dupree and Ryan Hoover. They're miracle workers. I mean, the amount of players that we're able to work out and the range that we're able to work out throughout our draft processes kind of independent of what our pick status is, is incredible. And those guys leverage their relationships and their ability to communicate and they just work and they work and they work. And so we were able to get Andre in. You know, we were able to spend time with him, uh, evaluate him. He had a pro day in Chicago. Everyone was able to see that. Um, so every touch point that we were allowed to have and we were able to do, these guys uh, got us in a position to do it. And we learned more and more about uh, the young man that he is, um, studied him more in his game and just felt really, uh, excited to have an opportunity to draft them. Um, so often for you guys, shooting's been a major priority in kind of building around Giannis. That's not something he did particularly well at the college level. What do you think stands out about him that he can still have success at the next level, even if that might not develop? Yeah, and I might be a little bit off, like in the national championship game stats, but he's a winner. To impact winning at a high level with low attempts, um, he just knows how to do it. And it's not that he can't shoot or that he won't shoot. It's just he knows how to play. He'll find his spots. He'll pick his spots. And um, I, if he were sitting here next to me right now, he'd tell you he can work on it, and he will work on it. He's a tireless worker. He's a big-time competitor. Um, and he'll get better in that area. That it's a, it's a teachable skill. It's something that you can improve on, right? And I think it's way harder to find guys that are 6'3 or 6'4 and teach them how to be 6'6 or 6'7 and, you know, not athletic and teach them to be athletic. And so... Andre's got a lot of gifts, natural and earned and worked gifts that I think uh, will give him a chance to be successful for us. Um, I'm, I'm guessing yes, but you, you were okay with the medical in terms of his knee surgeries and, and things of that nature coming in? Yeah, I mean, obviously this is a really in-depth, thorough process and people have their own opinions and, and there's risk rewards on talent and medical and character and all the things that kind of go through a draft process. Um, we wouldn't have taken Andre if we didn't feel comfortable about him and the whole package and, and um, the way in which we were able to do it. So 
Um, really excited about him. He's played at a high level, and we think he'll do that for us. What was the process with, with Adrian in this one in terms of maybe the athletic profile or skill set profile in terms, and then working with the new coach in that way? I know early on you had said finding that partnership would be important. So how did you two work together in terms of uh, Adri uh, Andre and, and Chris? Yeah, I think um, his opinion, uh, the coaching staff's opinion, th there's a little bit of hitting the ground running with this group and everything we're going through. Uh, but to the best of our ability, we're pulling them into our processes. Um, we're meeting, we're watching film, we're discussing, and we're going through, you know, here's what we think here, you know, this is why. And a lot of it up until here in the last minutes and making the decisions. And so it's been very open, very collaborative. Uh, he's got great insight, great opinions. Um, we're not trying to build a roster uh, – like we have in the past. He's a different coach. We're going to have a different system. There are core kind of non-negotiable things that we are always going to care about, and he's very aligned in those things. Um, but we also uh, weigh on his opinions, use his opinions in trying to build this out. And I think you know, he came in when we had our press conference a, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was now, really talking about energy and effort and defensive versatility and be able to close out and switch and challenge and things like that. And I don't think it's a mistake that you see what we try to do in the draft. And we're going to try to um, bring people into our system and grow them in our system um, with our new coach and in, in the way that we want to play. And so um, I, he's as, as excited as I am about these guys. Defense seems to be a strength of his. Just what stands out about his defense? What sticks out, and what type of position? You talked about the Swiss Army knife. What types of positions can he defend if need be? I'd be hard to, you know, he's going to have to grow his body and continue to do that. Um, in in the modern NBA or current NBA, I almost think one through five. I mean, for sure, one through four. I mean, he's he's got a six six frame with shoulders and and mobility probably a 6'10 to 6'11 reach and wingspan. He's athletic, uh, very competitive and physical. Um, so I, I don't think there's many limits on what he can guard defensively. I know his strength and his kind of development there will maybe, you know, uh, help him maybe be more impactful in the bigger positions, the kind of four or five positions. But what stands out about it, I think, Steve, is his IQ, um, his willingness to put himself in those positions. And athletically, he has the, the ability to execute kind of the mission or, you know, what he wants to accomplish with that. I mean, he's been a very impactful defender um, at a high level in college. And so, um, it, but offensively, I, I don't want to downplay what he can do offensively just because he doesn't have these eye popping stats. This is a connector. This is a guy that makes ball plays, that can uh, help people get shots, uh, can finish out in transition. He's going he's gonna to do some things that, are, that will wow us. Um, and, you know, he's a, he's a second round pick and he's a rookie, so he's going to have to grow and develop, you know. Uh, but I think he's got the right makeup to do that and he'll have the right opportunity to get what he earns here with Milwaukee. John, a couple of times you've said that he's a winner. Um, are there just certain things that in the interview process that you learned about him or intangibles or anything that you can describe that just makes him so? Yeah, probably no specific you know, illustrations, Lance, but um, his calm and his demeanor, uh, the way he articulates kind of how he, view, how he views things, um, how his skill sets and, and his approach to the game has translated to winning, um, I think, he, like I said, he's a connector on the floor. The way that he plays is on selfishness, but I think he's a connector off the floor too. And, again, he's coming in as a rookie, so he'll have to earn that opportunity and earn his voice and, and kind of grow with our team. But I think just from a culture perspective, a selfless perspective, the IQ that he brings and the competitiveness, those things lend to winning. And it's very obvious when we spend time with him that that's who he is, and he has been. And that's why he's been so successful. John, uh, Mike Clemens, um, in that – in that same line, Andre suffers the fractured finger, and Dan Hurley was asked, what are you going to miss over this next three or four weeks? And he says, his experience. And is that minutes played, or is there is there a poise that this kid has? Yeah, there's a – some people just have it. There's a natural poise, which is kind of going back even to, to the earlier question – that's just obvious and evident. And so, you know, I can't speak to exactly what Dan was referencing, but I would imagine it was way more than the poise, the calm, um, and that effect that it has on a team, especially, you know, he's a co-captain, you know, so he's one of the leaders of that group. Um, but I think in time, due time and, and with growth and development and opportunity, uh, he could grow into that someday in the NBA. He could be a guy that is a calm and a presence um, with a, a veteran team and a winning team. Uh, and it never hurts to try to do that as a young guy as well. But – He's he's a he's a special individual. You know, he's a really in, special kid and and or young man, and and I think has a chance to be a really good player. 
Um, with the the new changes in the CBA, I think they're maybe still waiting for that to be formalized. But with the second rounders being able to have three, four year deals now and not having to use some other things, um, was that part of the calculus to a degree? Where where knowing aprons and things to maybe add a couple of young guys who might be able to be signed for longer. Um, was that, was that part of it, I guess, in terms of maybe wanting to take advantage of, of two picks? Yeah. I don't know what I can, it can't be specific on the CBA, um, right now in kind of the transition we're in, but obviously, um, we're hopeful that it'll be a new CBA in place, um, soon. And there's no question with, you know, the way that I think things are going and, and this is not new or, or, uh, just to what's going on now. I just think that the value of, you know, young players, but more importantly, kind of uh, rookie contracts on your team when you're paying the luxury tax, when you have apron restraints, um, when you're trying to facilitate deals, is just valuable. And it's it's really valuable if they can play. If you can get guys to contribute on low low value contracts or low dollar contracts young and then reward them for what they've earned, you know, at the end of it, um, it just really helps you balance a lot of the things that winning competitive teams have to do in our league. And so, yeah, there's definitely a strategic element of this as well. Um, to Chris, you mentioned his his body type and athleticism. What, I guess, what did you like about him? Uh, I think it was the reports out there that that Rich kind of let people know that maybe there was a home for him with with you all. But um, what did you like about him, and especially at 19 or 20 later, um, that he can develop and grow into? Yeah, Chris. Chris uh, again has the pedigree. This is this a McDonald's All American. Um, went to a, a top level program. Uh, has been one of the best players in his class. You know, for a lot of years. Um, really competitive kid, um, young man. Uh, really mature body. You know, in frame for for his age, and a really hard worker. You know, and so I think when you put those things together, and, and he's got a great game. I mean, he he attacks the rim. Um, can put the ball on the floor. Big part of the season at Kentucky, he was a plus shooter from the perimeter. You know, later in the season, kind of uh, slipped a little bit. Uh, there's just a lot to work with there, and, and I think he has the right approach. He has the right mentality um, to grind and make it work uh, as a second round pick on an NBA team, a good NBA team, in the way that he's going to have to do to do it. So. Uh, we're excited about him, just as we are about Andre, and I think that we've got two um, competitive, physically strong, phys physically um, gifted uh, young wings that we can add to this team. Uh, you mentioned that you know you make the trade and you have a couple potential targets in mind. You have an idea of what you're looking for. I, I can't help but notice you leave with two big, strong wings. Um, just. How much did that archetype kind of mean to you guys this summer, and, and was that one of the major goals of kind of this draft? Uh, it meant a lot, and it was absolutely a goal. I could elaborate more, but uh, it's not a secret. I think it's very obvious. Um, different levels of experience, different levels of college success, different ages, um, but the basis of who they are and what we think they can bring of the competitiveness, the size, the athleticism, the strength. Uh, they're both unselfish. They, they're high IQ players. Um, was absolutely something that we targeted. And, and really, you know, we didn't go get 36 until we felt like we could get that. Um, and at 58, we hoped we could get it. Um, but you never know. I mean, that's, that's really far down in the draft. Um, and we had exit plans for 36. If that didn't work out, we kind of jumped without a parachute when we went and got that pick. Um, in 58, we obviously had exit strategies as well. But um, knowing that we had a chance to get those guys when they got there, it was clear that's what we wanted to do. You talked about Andre's passing a little bit. Just what what stands out to it about, or what stands out to you about it? I, I think that it's impactful. I mean, I, I don't know how to say this eloquently, but it's like he passes with a purpose, you know. So he he. It's kind of like passes that lead to passes, passes that lead to open shots. They're ball moving passes. They're quick decisions. They're they're within the flow, and that's kind of when I when I say connector. Um, you can be a guy who passes, but not at the right rhythm, not at the right pace, and and um, you don't really connect. You don't really help things kind of um, move move smoothly. And I think he does that at a really high level for a guy who's a quote unquote wing, but he's not. I mean, he's a Swiss Army knife. He's, he could be a big guard. He could be a you know, solid size wing, and he could be an undersized, you know, big, and and I think he could be effective in all those areas, actually. Uh, John, with with drafting Marjan last year, kind of obviously being another kind of big wing in that sense, and then getting these these two players this year, 
what I guess how can they sort of complement each other? You know, being three young guys in terms of in sim similar positions and what they can actually bring to to the team next year. Yeah, I mean, complement each other. I think again, I think they're all kind of cut from the same cloth. Hopefully, um, I mean, they're going to compete with each other. That's for sure. You know, they're they're all competing for minutes on a really good team where there's not going to be a lot of minutes. Um, they are, and they have to be willing and open to, to growing and developing and spending time in the G League if that's what's best for them. And, and with the Wisconsin herd, um, they're going to have to spend time in the weight room and buy into our development system and be ready when they're called upon to play and give us minutes on our roster. And, and um, I think they'll complement each other in that they're, you know, they're shared kind of struggle and grind that they have to do to, to be successful with a really good team in the NBA, hopefully. And you know, we're betting that they have the right mentality and approach to do that. John, you mentioned uh, Chris Middleton, uh, Brooke Lopez. Same thing. I know you have a number of free agents, but where does that stand, and how, you know, optimistic do you feel that you can keep him? Yeah, I mean, I can't comment or wouldn't comment on any optimism. I just, again, both of those guys specifically are core to who we have been, and, and we're hopeful that we can have them back, and you know, when the time's appropriate, and you know, they're both technically extension eligible, so there's things we can talk about now and things that we can't. Um, if we don't extend them, they'll become free agents. But ultimately, what matters is we're hopeful to have them back. I mean, they, 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 we've been really good, and they're a big part of that, and we want to try to keep them. Speaking of the draft, is, is Hugo still in the plans? I know he had um, a surgery, so I guess how did you feel about that? And is there an option for him to maybe to, to be part of the team? Yeah, so great question. Um, he did have a surgery. He had a really good start of the year. It was kind of fun for him to play with Victor and kind of the whole thing and for us to track him. Um, had a surgery. Surgery went really well. And he's he's back playing or was back playing, excuse me, recently. Um, I, I don't think it's likely that he'll be on our roster now, but he's absolutely part of our, our future. We spent a lot of time working uh, with him and his agent and the team that he's with to help you know uh, facilitate the development. Uh, we spent time with him in scouting over there uh, in Europe throughout the year. And uh, he's a really exciting kind of young player and, and may actually be part of our summer league team, kind of a little bit uh, to be determined, which would be fun. But he, he's, a, he's a young draft rights asset that we're excited to have. And, yeah, absolutely someone that we are working with and, and you know, I think could be with the Bucks someday.